Bowl. It's your boy, J.H. Gibbons here. And I'm Will C. And welcome to yet another episode of the Acromas Podcast, episode 72. That's unbelievably high. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're joining us, if you're listening to us, first of all, thank you for joining us yet another Sunday. Uh, wherever you are in the world, I want to thank you for taking the time out, whether it's on a Sunday or sometime during the week, and you're in your car, you're ironing your clothes, you're at work, whatever you're doing, thank you for listening. If you're watching us, Here's what I want you to do. I want you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell because I know you run YouTube and here's what's going to happen when you run YouTube and you do that. The next time you open up that YouTube app, this episode of the Acromas podcast or any other episode of the Acromas podcast will be available for you to view. And most of all, it is free to do so, guys. We need you to subscribe, to like, and to enjoy our content in the way that we know is happening. This is how you do it. This is how you show your support. And this is how you spread it along so we can have it reach worldwide. Uh, we know that it's working. We know that it's helping our longtime listeners. And we know that there are folks who are really enjoying it, who are just hearing us for the first time. Uh, just as you're listening and tuning in now, you're definitely going to have a good time with this episode. So please go ahead and like it now. If you're not on YouTube, take yourself over there and go ahead and subscribe, guys. Like it, and you'll be the first ones to get our content, as Jay said. And as I like to say each and every week that we give and provide this to you, dropping these gems, it is free to do so as a reminder because we are limited on what those things are now, guys. So please, show that support, man. Be proactive about it. We appreciate you for it. Absolutely. I, I can't even believe that uh, there is absolutely no cost tied to getting some of these gems here. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable because the thing, the thing is that what we're putting out is something that you can't find on Google. Not to say that it hasn't been typed up or people haven't talked about it, but you're getting it from the experience side, right? People who have gone through it, people who are going through it now, it's much different than you would get with, you know, someone who has not been through it but has either interviewed somebody about it or they're just they're just guessing at that point. So we want you to, to stay connected with our community, to continue to build with our community. And look, we've been here for 72 weeks straight. That is a very long time to be consistent. So there's no reason why you could not be consistent taking these gems and applying that action to it because that is the most important part of it. What a week it has been, we'll see. Man, it is uh, even just outside of what we do with Acromas, it has been a crazy week. It's been busy. It's been frustrating at times, uh, but we've made it to yet another Sunday. Um, we want to join you this Sunday again to, to talk a lot more about what we're doing with our summer body special. So last week, of course, we went over how to develop those abs. And I don't expect anybody who did not have abs last week to all of a sudden have them now, but I hope you now have some gems that you got from us last week to help you understand exactly how you may actually get it to show. I know that is the issue for many people. It's because of how high your body fat percentage might be right now. And the only way for it to show is if it's low, right? They always say abs are made in the kitchen, man. And that is no doubt. You cannot outrun bad nutrition. So it's very important that you get your mind right, you get your nutrition right. You get, you get that weight under control, and as you continue to lose it, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to see it. Your abs will be visible, but you just got to be consistent, and you got to be progressive. It sounds easy, right? It's not, we say that every single week. It sounds easy, but it takes a lot of effort from you. It takes a lot of focus. It takes a lot of concentration. It takes knowing exactly where you're going, right? It takes understanding what your purpose is. If you don't know what that is, you don't know where you're going. You're just, you're just, you're just a, a ship without a sail or a ship that's out to sea and does not have a direction, You're just going with the waves. And if you want to do that, that's fine, but this may not be the place for you. So once again, we want to thank you for joining us here in the Your Chromos Podcast. We want you to check out episode 71. If you did not have a chance, you can pause this, watch that, come back. Um, and most of all, let us know, whether it's in the comments section on YouTube, whether you DM us on IG, Facebook, TikTok, wherever on social media, or you hit us up via email at theacromas at gmail.com. Hit us up anywhere. We want to grow with you. We want to keep expanding. We want to keep building. And that is why I am proud to announce, both Will C and I are proud to announce that the Acromas Fitness website is live. It is absolutely live. You need to type in acromasfitness.com 
and you will find all the latest, all the newest gear from the Acromas podcast side and the Acromas fitness side. That's t-shirts, hoodies, bottles, hats, caps, bags, everything that you can imagine that you could put out there to the universe, we have been able to put onto our website. We also have a blog that we're going to be updating every single week that's going to talk about different items in fitness, whether it's getting your health back on track, whether we give you tips or tricks to, to build more muscle or to lose fat, or just updating you on news in the fitness industry so that we keep it 100 with you, because that's what we're all about here at Acromas. So um, we'll see. I know you've you had a chance to dive into the website. You know, we've been creating it for, for months now on end, and we're, we're proud that we hit yet another milestone, just like we did with the 21-3 method, which is also available on acromasfitness.com right now. Oh, yeah, guys. Um, it, it's just a very joyous occasion for us, um, for our community, uh, and for you to be a part of and joining in as well. Uh, it's a beautiful way to find everything consolidated in one place, easy access. You don't have to go everywhere around the world to get to it. You know exactly where it is at acromisfitness.com. Just go, go in there, check out what we have. It's something for everyone. And again, with the merchandise, this is something that you can take pride in being a part of. Uh, no different than something else you may enjoy and that you may purchase. This is an opportunity to give back to something that has true purpose and something that's about you that shows in so many ways that you matter and you understand that. So please be a part of contributing to it, guys. Go give us as much support as you can. Spread the word. Get it out there. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it. A lot of time and effort has went into it. Uh, so as Jay said, you're going to see more content being updated on that on a regular basis. And um, it's the one-stop shop for Chromes, guys. Absolutely. We'll see. And like I said, it's, you know, it was a labor of love for sure, you know, um, but we, we now have it launched. It's active. And we, we want you to peruse the site. Look, we're not pressuring you to buy anything right now. We want you to learn exactly who we are, what we're about, what we stand for, and why you should love this brand. I, I think this brand represents a lot of you who are listening right now. You might be an athlete who kind of got off track with fitness and you want to come back to it, but you just don't know where to start because there isn't anything out there that really tells you exactly those, those steps, those gems that you need to get started. The 21-3 method will help you. Acromas Fitness will help you. So like I said, just continue to, continue to help us, continue to support, continue to, to ride for us, and we will always ride for you guys. So thank you once again. We've been able to get this, this website launched. It's active. It's out there. And We've been able to build it from scratch, and that, that kind of takes us into where we're going today when we're talking about building from scratch and specifically building muscle, dare I say, from scratch. Now, of course, we, we all have muscles to a certain extent, and some might be a little bit stronger than others. Um, that, you know, that just comes with the territory. It comes with resistance training. It comes with building your muscles, and um, I'm sure many of you guys out there, if you have not ever been to a gym or you've never seen somebody fit, I guess that just means you just aren't living. You might be dead, which I don't know how you're listening to this, but uh, thank you anyway. We need, we need all the listeners we can get right now. <laughs> but if you, if, you are, if you are active in fitness, I think this is a great episode for you to really listen to and take a lot of notes here because there are some gems in here that you probably would not have guessed was possible in the fitness realm. You may not have heard it before in the industry itself. And when it comes to truly building muscle and keeping on that muscle for an extended period of time. Now, just a, a personal story for me. I, God, we'll see. I, I think I started actually lifting at the age of 12. I know I, I, I tell this story on so many episodes that we've had, but I want to take it from a perspective of actually learning and experimenting on how to truly build muscle mass. And back when I was young, you know, back when we were all kids, um, you know, mid to late 90s, early 2000s, you know, all we were, we were just outside. I think things have changed these days. I don't think many kids are outside as they used to anymore, but um, we were outside. I mean, we were playing, we were active, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're up outside at about 7, 8 a.m. We don't come in until maybe lunchtime to get a quick snack or if the ice cream truck passes, you know, we'll get something, but we were always on the go. So back then we, you know, we, we didn't really know that what we we're doing is staying in shape and staying fit because our goal was just to play, right? We, we didn't have that in our mind. So it came so much easier. And 
it wasn't until I, I want to say around the age of 12, I was introduced to true resistance training. So we had a fitness center uh, that was on my old street. Shout out to Hewitt Ave out in Montgomery County, of course. Um, and this fitness center, I mean, it, you know, it didn't have the state of the art equipment. It wasn't, it wasn't a gold gym like out in Venice Beach or anything like that. But um, it got, it got me results as a young growing kid. And um, like I mentioned, because we were always active, because we were always running or we were on our bikes, we were playing sports like basketball or football, we were just always moving. And I, I knew that adding resistance training to my, my I guess, fitness regimen, if you will, uh, would have helped out a bit. You know, I, I, I didn't really have a goal back then. I didn't really have a purpose to, to build muscle or gain muscle. It just became something that was very fun for me to do. Um, but it wasn't until I started putting on a bit muscle, that's when I really started thinking about, okay, how far can I go here? Can I, can I manipulate my body a little bit? Can I change my physique a little bit? Even though I'm, you know, 13, 14, um, and, and still a growing young boy, it, it helped me and it molded me even up to this day to understand what discipline is and what determination is and how goal setting works. And it, it, I honestly think if I did not have that in my life when I was younger, it's not that I would not have accomplished goals, but I wouldn't understand the power of true goal setting. Uh, because once you know how to set goals and how to achieve them consistently, once you have that foundation, there's nothing that can stop you from continuously achieving goals you never thought were possible. So, you know, when I got into high school, I, I, I was much bigger and stronger than some of the other incoming freshmen and even some of the juniors and seniors on the team because I had that in my past. And I was able to, to then go from where I was in a fitness center that just had all cable machines. You know, they're, they're not, I don't, think, I don't think back then they were allowed to have, you know, uh, free weights in these gyms because it could be a liability of obviously. Um, so, you know, my first introduction to free weights happened in high school. And I always, I always say, and even in the blog that we have on the Acromas Fitness website right now, we mention what a hardcore gym looks like. And this particular gym was as hardcore as you can get, especially for a kid, for a child, you know, I'm a young growing teenager and I didn't know what to expect. So um, I walked in, I mean, this gym, we'll see, it was dark, it was dingy, the, the barbells were rusty, the dumbbells were starting to rust out a little bit too. There was only one window in this gym, there was no AC, at least no work in air conditioning. So in the summer months, especially because we were on the second level and the window that we had, it didn't, you know, there was no view there. It just led us onto the roof of our school. So you can imagine there's no breeze coming in. It's hot, it's humid, everybody's sweating. But that to me was the best weightlifting experience I've ever had in my life because it taught me to get down in the gutter, to get in the trenches and work very hard to get to what I what I wanted to achieve right and and every gym I've been through since especially the ones that are more in the commercial gym side like your LA fitness or your planet fitness it just didn't hit as much as these gyms did so shout out to all the the, the big hardcore gyms that are still around out there that are that are really the 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 core of powerlifting and bodybuilding I I, I love those gyms and this gym in particular helped me, um, especially when I went to college. Now, this is exactly where I would say I, I met my peak, so to speak, when it came to powerlifting. I was, I was about 212 pounds. Um, I had a few friends that I was working out with every single day, I would say, uh, when I was in college. It's all I used to do is I'd eat, I'd work out, I'd eat, I'd work out every single day. Um, and I, I, I grew a bond, you know, I had a group of friends that I worked out with. And there was, um, there was a few times where we actually started competing. And we had an official competition at our school. Um, and like I said, I was around 212, 215 pounds, which meant that I was competing against other heavyweights. But these heavyweights were heavyweights. And um, actually, when we get to our, our real core conversation, I'll, I'll tell you some of the advantages that they had that I didn't. But needless to say, I was able to win my very first competition that I competed in. I, like I said, once again, I was 212 pounds. I was able to deadlift over 500 pounds. 
I was able to squat 515. I was able to bench press 405 pounds. And when, when it comes to squatting, the other thing that they did at that, that time is they wanted to see how many reps you can get of 225 pounds. I was able to get 47. I lie to you not, all those numbers I have not been able to hit ever again in my life. And I've tried, I've tried. I've been, I've been able to get the 405 on the bench. I've been able to get, I've been able to get five on the squat for sure. Um, but to get all, all four of those numbers, again, I was not able to. And I think a lot of that speaks to consistency. Of course, once I graduated college, you got work, you got life, things start slowing down. I'm not going to the gym five days a week. I don't have the luxury of going to take a nap after, you know, taking a shake or something. Um, so all those things, of course, you know, detracted me from where I was back then. But the, the five things that I can say, um, and I think this is where we get into our core conversation, we'll see is there are a few things that I can take, not just from the experience that I had when I was lifting and building these, building this muscle over an extended period of time, but there are also tips that you can take away and you can implement in the gym today, right? Like after you're done hearing this, hell, even if you're hearing this right now and you got your headphones on, you're hitting that cardio machine to warm up for a good 25, 30 minutes. Once you hop off and you go upstairs or wherever your resistance training section is in your gym, this is something that you can take right now and you can apply. So let's jump right into it. We'll see. Um, for starters, and I, I want to get your take on this because I, I know it's this particular subject is a little bit controversial, but, but if we're talking about building muscle, which is exactly what our conversation is today, I would say one of the ways that you can build muscle, especially if, you're, if you want to build it quickly, is to use performance enhancing drugs. Now, <laughs> I, want, I want to say this, I am not advocating that you use those high level, very potent performance enhancing drugs, you know, the ones that tend to be illegal, especially in professional sports. I'm not, I'm not saying you should go out there and try to find HGH or TRT or testosterone boosters or anything like that. But what I would say is that there are other supplements on the market that are legal that you could take. One being creatine, you know, monohy creatine monohydrate, the ones that are, um, I think there's, they have others that are mineral, mineral, mineralized. If I'm saying that right, I don't even know. But they do have, they do have that. You could take creatine. You can also take whey protein. Um, those are two supplements that are probably going to be the ones that will help you out best. Those are the ones, at least when I was lifting weights, when I was, when I was really getting into it and I was going for that goal when I was in college. Um, that, that was my go-to. I, I took more whey protein than I did creatine. Uh, one, because it was easier to mix into, you know, water or milk, and you can have it with some of your meals that, you, that you're prepping. Uh, but creatine is yet another one. I, I, I swear by creatine. I, I was trying to find the creatine that they had, um, and they offered back when I was in high school, back in the early 2000s. I don't think they have it anymore, but you can still get the powder form. You can get the pill form. Um, those are typically the ones that I've seen work now. I, again, I'm not, I'm not advocating for TRT or steroids or HGH or anything like that. But when it comes to building muscle quickly, that is probably your, your best bet. We'll see. I know you've, I know you've been on, on IG and I know people who have been watching this have been too. You've been on Facebook. You've seen all of these different bodybuilders. And right now, if you're watching this, or you're listening to this, just go to Instagram, go to that search type in fitness, type in bodybuilding, type in anything related to physiques. Um, and you'll see a ton of different people that have probably taken some type of performance enhancing drug. I would say the 1% of those people that you see are natural, even if they have it in their, in their bio saying natty, 99% of them are not truly natural. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess, uh, you know, since we're on that subject, it, it really, the way I see it is, it's like, okay, like, what is it that you're striving for? Like, what do you envision of your physique? Because I, I can only speak to myself personally, sure. you know, bodybuilding, whatnot, that has never really been my strength in that regard of like, you know, packing on the, 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 the weight. I've tried it. It just wasn't for me. I think the way my build is, it's not, it's not, 
is just not a good fit for me. I was trying to weigh protein as well uh, at one point. And, and with that, it definitely requires consistency uh, if you're going to build that sort of mass because uh, it will come on you quick. So, <laughs> um, so I had trouble with that for me personally. Uh, I mean, what I do in my life now, uh, I, mm. I, I just take your average day, your, your, your average daily vitamins, you know, your multivitamins, your, your zinc, um, your, 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 your uh, calcium, your iron, your, like whatever you need for your body. I, I, I take just that and I will just proceed with doing my cardio related sort of integral workouts, but for building, you know, muscle, I know that's a bit different because it depends on what you're trying to, how, how do you want to look? So I think from an, from an average goer like myself, someone who just wants to stay, stay fit, stay, 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 uh, you know, tuned and, 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 you know, composed in my own body and be comfortable with that, as opposed to someone who's an, an athlete of sorts. Um, I think you have to be mindful of like, okay, what it is your goal that you're striving for and how it really fits to you and not the perception of everybody else. Because if you're trying to just be, you know, bulked up just for the sake of it, and you don't really have a purpose stemming behind it, then you're not really going to educate yourself enough to learn your body. Um, and I think that's the key, uh, Jay, is like really kind of learning what works best for your body and what you're doing, right? Like where, but where something you said, I think is, was very important that was a takeaway for me was like, when you were able to make the time in college uh, to dedicate to that, you were striving with an intention and a purpose that made sense for you to build on those ways, right. which is why your numbers were they, where they were at, at a high and a peak. And you were able to do that at a major level for, for different areas and competition, as opposed to where you are at your point in your life now, where um, you, you have your day-to-day grind job you, you know as an entrepreneur you have your business ventures that you're into um you know your marriage you know, your personal life if you just make a time for, for for jay as well right um you have a lot of areas that you're dedicating yourself to where your workout regimen has to adjust around to fit where you are your needs and real in a realistic way and i think sometimes we we, we might get ahead of ourselves of like not recognizing how we need to fine tune like what our methods of staying in shape looks like. So if you still want to build on that mass, how do you do it with time, uh, like over time with the time you have so that you can stay consistent in that discipline uh, that you build? Because it's embedded. Like you heard what Jay said for him from 12 years old. So like that's something that is like a training wheel that never really is going to go away at this point because it's engraved into his into who he is and how he operates. Uh, I just think with time, with experience, uh, you, you, you gradually uh, mold uh, it to fit where you are. So like, for example, myself now, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with some complications physically and I'm working through. Um, so I, 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 where I was a year ago, I know I'm not now uh, because I'm working through that, but I understand, okay, well, you know, well, you have to make some adjustments so that you can hit a stride that's comfortable for your body now because your body lets you know. So, um, yeah, it makes sense, Jay. You know, we get older, but we, we can't do we can't hit what we were doing before. No, but that doesn't mean we can't tune it to to still maximize uh, our effort and our body physique in a way that we we are happy with. Um, so I can't speak on creatine because I, I I haven't delved in that in that sure. uh, you know or anything like that. And again, like like that's sort of like uh weight training and whatnot i've never really been too big on that uh, if anything i'd ask you if, if you know for those areas of like fine-tuning prior to my injuries is where i was headed so right. it's like you know i think it's just um identifying where you are in your life identifying your purposes of what you're trying to construct uh because at the end of the day we all want to look good but you want to make sure you truly feel good uh at the same time the worst thing you could do to yourself is to have that look, but your body inside is just like, stop, like, this is not cool. Like, and unfortunately enough, like we, and I believe we mentioned this before in a previous episode, we have seen a higher increase in a lot of passings as of late for a lot of um, uh, bodybuilders and some athletes like uh, who, uh, you know, they maybe, you know, I don't want to speak 
on too much of it, but like, I think it's just, uh, we have to be mindful of our bodies and like how much restraint we put on ourselves. Um, because it, you know, it, it's like an engine, you know, we, we can, we can put too much restraint on it and what we put in it too is not always, you know, what may be best for us. So you really got to take the time to like learn what works with your body. I'm all for dieting. Like Jay mentioned earlier, I just think there's methods that fit you because what may work for Jay may not work for me, vice versa. Uh, but it comes with being willing to discipline myself enough to try. Uh, notice how I said, like, I didn't say anything about cutting out everything, cutting this out. Cause you're, cause if you're giving that effort consistently, you're going to naturally start like adjusting and fine tuning and sculpting, as I like to say, your mode of what you envision. Now, what Jay did mention with like the creatine and whey protein, like a lot of that is helpful too, because like it can help fill in those areas that you're looking to get filled in. And you just have to be able to fine tune your, your, your workout regimens around to focus on those muscles and those areas that you're trying to strengthen, uh, that you want to give a certain physique. But keep in mind that our body types and mass and our bone density and everything that's factored into that, some of it we can't control. So you're not going to always hit exactly what you saw, like, or like you may see like uh, <laughs> these superheroes in these uh, Marvel movies or like those Spartans in 300, where if you look, everyone was in shape, but everyone's body structure and type is different. So like, just be mindful of that so that when you visualize, uh, you see yourself and you get there, be happy with where you are. And, and then you can start really appreciating taking care of yourself so that you don't like overexert your, your, your body. Absolutely. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more. We'll see. I think, especially for those who have passed, you know, I, I would say that a lot of the, a lot of the supplements that we mentioned do naturally occur in our bodies already. And again, they are supplements. They are to supplement what you're doing. Um, it's not necessarily something that you want to abuse regardless of what, you know, how potent the particular um, supplement you're taking is. Uh, you want to be very careful with your dosage. You want to be very careful with your usage. Uh, you don't want to become hooked or you don't want your, your body physiology to change a bit so that you can no longer function without it. So um, it's very, very important that you, you do stick to understanding exactly what your goals are. Because uh, as we'll see said, you know, our, our goals could be completely different, but um, in the grand scheme of things, we all want to be healthier. We all want to feel better about ourselves. So um, I think, you know, one element of, of doing that is ensuring that your, your body is right, both physically and mentally. With phys on the physical side, of course, we, you know, we talked about performance enhancing drugs. And again, it's not, I'm not talking about those major massive ones that are typically banned. I'm talking to ones that do help you to enhance your performance at whatever whatever realm. I mean, you could even say a fruit could be a performance enhancer, right? You know, so though those are the sort of things that I, I really want to focus on because it is about health. Um, and it's about ensuring that you are healthy both physically and mentally. Um, and we'll see, I also wanted to to jump in on something that you mentioned in terms of being able to be consistent. You're absolutely right. You know, life happens sometimes, right? There are times where you may even need to take a mental break and step away from the, the go, go, go that you've been on for the past several years. Um, and I would say the same goes to you being in a gym and doing resistance training. Um, the, the next thing I want to mention is regimen changes. So if you're on a particular regimen now um, and it hasn't been working, let's say maybe you have been on the bench press for a while and you're, you're at 275 pounds, your goal is 315 pounds. And for whatever reason, you just can't get past 275. It means that there might need to be a change involved in the regimen that you've been using for however long it has been. Um, and I, I'll stick with bench press for this example, but you can use this, this sort of thought process and strategy for any type of body um, but, you know, muscle group that you want to work on, you know, that includes whether it's squat with your hamstrings or, or uh, your quads or your calves or whether it's deadlifts, whatever, whatever it is, um, just make sure to, to take notes on this particular strategy. So whenever I'm lifting, um, especially when it comes to benching and I do want to increase my bench press max or I want to build muscle and I want to use the bench press to help me, 
I got to think about all the different muscle groups and all the different, um, all, all of those different tendons that are involved in bench pressing, right? Besides just my chest, which I would say it doesn't play a major role. I think it really only depends on how far your grip is. Right now, if you're, if you're not watching the podcast and you're listening to it, if you get a chance and you put your arms out wide and you try to push out, you could feel that outside of your, of your pectoral muscle work out a little bit. So what that means is if the wider you go, the more of a plane you have to work with on your chest. And that outside layer of that, of that pectoral will get a lot more work than the inside would. Let's say if I was doing a pec deck or I was doing some sort of, you know, cable cross motion with my chest, that'll tend to work on that inside portion. Um, but if I want to build muscle and I want to increase my bench press max and I'm stuck at 275 or I want to grow, I know that number one, my triceps are going to help me. So in this example, what I would do is I would work a ton more tricep exercises, whether it's skull crushers, whether it's seated tricep extensions, overhead tricep extensions. We'll see. I know when we're in the gym, we love to hit our, our uh, we have this, this particular exercise where we would do five reps um, with a with a relatively light weight at let's say thirty pounds, um, we would do we would do five reps with just the resistance from the cables. Then what I would have him do is put his hands on either the rope or the cable itself or the the actual um, pulley system that I'm using, and he would increase gradually the amount of resistance that he's putting on. So it'll continuously get harder and harder for me. Um, he would then, we would then do that for another five reps, followed by five reps of me just going by myself, similar to those first five reps I mentioned. So it's 15 reps total. You do three sets of that. I guarantee you that is a perfect finisher for your tricep workout or any, you know, if you, if you want to do it on chest day as well, um, that's completely up to you. But that has skyrocketed my bench press. That has helped me. That, that one regimen change um, when I wanted to get to that next level has helped me tremendously. Another aspect of that too, right? When you are laying down on your back and you're pushing up, in order to get that stability, I also have to focus on my shoulders, right? So that's something else that I want to focus on. I want to be able to build strength in my shoulders through seated shoulder press with dumbbells. You could do strict overhead press with the barbell, um, you can do, there, there's a variety of different exercises you can do with that same push motion that I just showed you, and it would definitely help you, uh, you know, move through that plateau that you've hit when you were doing that bench press. So I would say that second tip in terms of being able to build muscle quickly, it would be to do some regimen changes. And like I said, it goes for your leg exercises as well, whether you're squatting, pay more attention to some of those cable workouts that you haven't done before. Pay attention to, to some of the stretches that you've been doing, right? A lot of flexibility matters here, especially when it comes to those particular workouts, because I, I, I firmly believe the more flexible you are, not only the better the form would be, um, regardless of what exercise you're doing, but you'd be able to get a much better range of motion. Um, and range of more motion is very important when it comes to building muscle and building muscle the right way. Um, the other aspect of that too, we'll see that I, I think a lot of a lot of um, people in our community may not be trying, and I, I think it also depends, as you mentioned too, on what your goals are. You know, your goals could be just maintenance, and if it is just maintenance, then this probably wouldn't apply to you. But of course, if you are looking to build that muscle the right way, it kind of goes along with regimen changes, although it's probably the same exercise that I'm talking about here. But it's progressive overload. So sticking with the same bench press example that we talked about before, what you would do with progressive overload, let's say we're still stuck at the 20, 275 pounds that we mentioned. What I would do is I would say, okay, I want to back away from that 275 pounds for a little bit. Let's say that is, I can only get one rep of that. So that would be my one rep max. I want to go maybe 80% of that so that I can probably knock out between three to five reps maybe. And what that, what that scaling back does is it helps me to dig a little bit deeper within myself. It also helps my mentality, which is a very, very important part of exercising. It's that mental. 
it's funny, quick, quick aside, we'll see, but whenever I'm in the gym and I have myself doing a particular workout, whether, you know, let's say it's squat, right? I, for whatever reason, even if the person behind me is supposed to be spotting me and he does not do anything, the fact that he's there helps me get that rep out more than if he wasn't. It's the strangest thing. And I think it's, it's that mentality to say, oh, this guy has my back so I can be a little bit more riskier. I can, I can, I can take this risk. I can take this chance to go as deep as I need to in my squad and shoot up. But at the same time, hey, let me show off a little bit. I know I got it. I got the confidence in me. I know I can push. I know I can dig. So then I go for that rep and I'm like, man, I got it. And it's funny because to contrast some of that, the times where I may not have anybody for whatever reason, my mindset is like, ah, oh, God, I don't, I don't know if I can hit this high of a rep. I don't know if I can hit this high of a weight rather, because there's nobody behind me. What if I fall? What if I fail? What if I step wrong? Ah, oh, there's nobody to catch me. If the weight falls off me, I'm going to be embarrassed because everybody's going to see it. Everybody's going to hear how loud the clang and hit. So um, that, that mentality is very, very important. So back to trying progressive overload. What I would do with that, especially with bench press, is I would probably start at about 250. Um, when I'm doing 250 for five reps, I would stay there until I can finish the entire set of what I'm doing, see the entire exercise of what I'm doing. So if I'm telling myself I want to hit four sets of five of that 250, I'm not moving on from 250 until I complete that four sets those four sets without any sort of cheating, without any sort of spot, that means I can comfortably go up a weight. So when I go up that weight, I may increase the weight by five, uh, five pounds, right? So this is, of course, a slow build. And that's the best way to go about doing it when you're trying to build muscle and hold on to it is to go that slow build route. Forget about the ego lifting. You, can, you, you start at 200 and you go all the way to 400. Forget that. If you're trying to build that muscle and keep it on and really get a lot of thickness in those tendons, that's the one thing that I would do is progressive overload, scale it back a little bit, really get in the trenches with that exercise that you're trying to do, and then progress slowly, continue to progress. I know it's going to get harder, but each time you're able to get that full set, it means it's time to move on, especially if you're trying to build muscle, we'll see. Yeah, those are really excellent pointers, Jay. Um, and very well thought out. And it, it'll help for those out there if you kind of didn't have an idea or direction, um, set a course of like an action. Like take what you can from what was shared with you uh, for what you're trying to accomplish in those areas. Because I know a lot of times we, we're a little hesitant to, to ask those questions because we don't want to not look like we don't we know what's going on, right? <laughs> Even in the gym, right? You're watching, you'll observe someone, but you won't ask them. Because, you you know, maybe it's because you don't know how people respond. Some people are a little yeah. weird, but um, in most cases, you'll find out most people be willing to help you because chances are someone helped them or they wish someone would have gave them some advice, some tips um, to yeah. help them. You know, each one teach one is my motto. So, um, yeah, I really hope that a lot of the information that was provided to you and the steps of what Jake took the time to really break down for you, take some of that and, and see how it applies to you, your current regimens, um, uh, the goals that you aspire for your own structure and um, implement it. And then when you do, make sure to let us know how that's helping you. Um, the difference is made and maybe um, getting from that, what, what did you say, that 295? To get to that 315, um, you know, let's see, see if you, if any of those changes kind of help those adjustments to get to where you're trying to go. Yep, absolutely. We'll see. And look, I, I, I think the one other aspect, if I, if I can add a fourth in here, I think the one, and, and again, all of these different ones that I mentioned take place at the gym, right? Whether it's supplementation um, with those performance enhancing drugs that we talked about, whether it's progressive overload or even some of those regimen changes that'll help you to build on that muscle and to hold on to it and to continue to grow. Of course, there's going to be a plateau. There's going to be tough times. There's going to be, there, there are going to be times where you're just completely burnt out. My, my, my fourth and last and probably most important tip in all of this is rest. Rest, sleep, all that stuff is literally where those muscles repair because when you're in the gym, you're, you're literally getting those tiny tears in those tendons. And, and what's happening is that you're not getting a chance to repair. So it's, uh, it's you know, it's, it gets a little bit tougher. 
it gets much and much tougher to, to be able to lift what you were lifting before. And I would say, you know, even, even with Will C lifting his daughter right now, like once, you know, once he's done doing that, once he puts it down, there may be some tiny tears in his biceps or in his shoulders because keeping her up takes, you know, it takes a little bit of strength, right? So, you know, when, with all that said and done, it's important to catch up on rest. It's important to, to use some of those supplementations to help you out. It's also important to try to progress, but progress slowly and make sure that when you're getting to that next, that next set of, of uh, weight range, that it is something that you can control and be able to, to execute with, uh, dare I say, perfect form, uh, because that's also important. And, and then, of course, it's just to rest, ladies and gentlemen. I think those four takeaways today would be those takeaways that we'd want you to, to go forth in the gym, even if you're there now. Hop on a bench press machine. When you're done, go to GNC or go to Vitamin World, or better yet, hop on Amazon. Buy a buy a whey protein, you know, buy a buy a, a whey protein tub or buy some creatine, buy something, right? Take a chance, take a step forward, consume enough protein to be able to help you build that muscle tissue back, to help be able to, to jumpstart that protein synthesis within your body. And then of course, rest, right? When that evening comes, just take a nap. I even mentioned it. I, I, I guess I did mention it. I did. When I was working out, when I was in college, I had the opportunity to take naps. And I guarantee, I, I promise you, we'll see. Every time I did that same strat, I went to the gym, I came back, I took protein immediately. And then right after that, I hopped in bed about a half an hour nap to an hour nap. That helped me tremendously. I literally felt my body changing. I felt stronger. Mm. I felt more limber. I felt well rested. And I can tell you that that was the difference in being able to go back to the gym again and hit it as hard as I could was being able to, to make sure that my muscle, my body, my, my body structure was just able to rest. So ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you once again for joining us on yet another episode of the Acromas podcast. We want to thank you for sitting down and listening to some of the tips that you can take, especially if you're just starting off this journey, which I know many of people in our audience are, or maybe you're just restarting. You've been to the gym before, you get it, you understand it, but you just try, you're trying to find yourself again. Allow Acromas Fitness to be that company that helps you find yourself again. Allow the Acromas Fitness website to be that one-stop shop for you to continue to build up your body, to build up your mind, to build up your spirit. If you are joining us on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, or wherever you hear your podcast, we want to thank you for joining us and listening to us again, especially those who have not seen us before or not heard of us before. Thank you. But I got to tell you something for those who have watched this before or have heard us before and still do not understand what we are about. I guess I'm just going to have to spell it out one more time. We'll Hi. see. Will you do the honors? A C H R O M O U S. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned before, we are on every single platform that you can hear a podcast Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Every single place, especially on social media, we are there too. Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and you're probably watching us on YouTube. And if you are, here's what I want you to do. If you did not do so when you started this video, here's yet another opportunity to do it. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. So the next time that you hop on YouTube and you're scrolling down your feed with your very, very sore hands, and you're trying to figure out how in the world can I continue to build muscle the right way? You tune in to episode 72 and you will learn exactly how to do that. And I cannot believe it is still the case. But most of all, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, listen, I have my little daughter, my lady here with me. She's going to tell you because I tell you every single time. What is it do, free to do, baby? It's free to do so. To subscribe, right? So, hit that like button. Yes. Subscribe. There you go. Because it's free to do so. So do it, guys. That's unbelievable. And if they understand it, if they understand that value, there's no reason why you can't too. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us on yet another episode of your Chromas podcast. Before I let you go, and before you get to enjoy the rest of your week and go to the gym and try some of these actions, try some of these workouts, try some of these tips within your workout, 
we are not done with the summer body special. We've got yet one more episode to go over. And I would say, especially if you're heading to the beach this summer, you want to show your body at its best. So next week, we will talk about the top five ways to burn fat all over your body. That is going to be a very important episode for those who want to shed the shirt this summer and look great in their Acromas gear. So we want you to join us for episode 73 of the Acromas podcast next week, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it, guys. We're going to give this a great closeout, end it with a banger. And, uh, you know, if you wasn't able to get your body right this year, by gosh, you got the tools to do it for next year, you know. But we're going to get you along the way. Uh, so so go ahead and hit, you know, hit that gym today. Or if you're at home, like, you know, like with myself, you got your little ones with them, pick them up. Like, do a workout with them because kids, make sure you have an exercise either way. So you might as well enjoy it. So put it to use, guys, and get ready for this next upcoming episode next week. Absolutely, man. Get those bodies working. Get on those regimens. Keep building that muscle. Most of all, Chromos Fitness is here for you. Ladies and gentlemen, until next Sunday, it is your boy, J.H. Gibbon here. Now I'm Will Sig. Hey.